Hello everyone, and I'm Autobot Sonic the Telltale Gamer, bringing ladies and Transformers, Telltale Games, and more. For today's Earthspark review, we're going to be looking at Season 2, Episode 3, Control Alt Delete, aka the episode where Hashtag finally gets her new alt mode. So, after the rather sorta lackluster Episode 2 with In Ruins, Control Alt Delete feels like a very strong return to form for Earthspark, and since that, I feel like it's an episode that feels very, very much so like a Season 1 episode. I mean that in the very best way. This episode is such a strong, powerful message, and it's a really, really good episode in furthering de developing Hashtag's character, but also gives us, honestly, a really, really good scene regarding Dot as well, and a few really good fight scenes as well. So we're gonna go ahead and see everything this episode did right and what it did wrong. So Control Alt Delete starts off with hashtag inside the ghost base that we saw Croft and Schloeder use a lot back in season one. As we see throughout the later parts of the scene, we see Alita, Optimus, and Bumblebee are all renovating the base into the proper Autobot base now. Kind of weird considering that it's apparently taken them a year now to turn this whole base into a Autobot one, assuming that maybe the Autobots were working somewhere else in the year since um, season one, but regardless. Anyway, Hashtag is standing in the base prepared to deliver a bunch of old ghost hard drives to a recycle center that the other Terrans and Multos are currently at, and when Twitch messages um, Hashtag to hurry up and get there faster because they need help, um, Hashtag states that she's going to be a while because she's busy um, updating her Wi-Fi capabilities. Because as you know, back in Season 1, Hashtag's Wi-Fi capabilities were only possible because she had herself linked up to everything Ghost was linked up to. And now since Ghost doesn't exist anymore, she's now updating her Wi-Fi capabilities now that she's hooked up to the Autobot Wi-Fi network instead of the Ghost network. Which I think is a cool way of explaining how Hashtag's powers will work in Season 2 differently compared to how they did in Season 1. Honestly... It's a very much needed nerf to Hashtag, because granted, I am very happy with how Hashtag's powers were utilized in Season 1, but I felt like if they were going to stay the same in Season 2, Hashtag could easily become very, very overpowered. So to have her ability sort of be nerfed by having her now be focused on more, on just being restricting herself to the Autobot um, Wi-Fi system, I think is a lot better in my opinion. But anyway, as Hashtag is getting ready to leave, she transforms into her ghost Almo before she's suddenly picked up by Bumblebee, who mistakes her for one of the other ghost vans that they have throughout the base. So Hashtag asks him what he and Optimus are doing with ghost vans, and at this point, um, Bumblebee explains that since ghost doesn't really exist anymore, they feel like they're going to take all the old ghost vans and repurpose them to other things, which Bumblebee has a really funny moment here where he wants um, to turn all of them into ice cream trucks, which Optimus is very much so, much so against. But at the same point, as Bumblebee is loading up a bunch of ghost fans into Optimus' trailer, he says that Hashtag should probably get a new alt mode too, since considering they got rid of all these ghost fans, it would be kind of weird if Hashtag st stayed in an alt mode as a ghost fan. So at this point, Hashtag, I was worried Hashtag would feel like, uh, why are you telling me to get a new alt mode, B? I should be fine, I'm happy with the way I am. But thankfully, that's not how Hashtag reacts. She's actually really excited thinking that, oh, I'm going to get a new alt mode now because the first one I got was an accident back in um, Season 1. So now I get to make, like, pick everything I want to be for this perfect alt mode. So as she's driving back, down, back to the recyclable center, she's, like, talking to herself in her head, imagining what all the things she wants for her new alt mode. When all of a sudden, she realizes that she now has an AI assistant with her that's built into her, um processor because of the update to the Autobot network, and the AI assistant's name is Val, which stands for Virtual Assistant Liaison, and I absolutely love Val as a little buddy duo for with Hashtag, how Val just always tries to, like, do what she can to help out Hashtag throughout this episode and later on in Season 2. I think it's a really, really cute uh, dynamic she and um, Hashtag have. It's made even better because Val is voiced by Sissy Jones, who of course voices Alita. And while I am grateful that Alita has a lot more to do in Season 2 than she did in Season 1, she already has more screen time in this first batch of Season 1, in Season 2 I should say, than she did throughout the entirety of Season 1. So, I'm really hoping this means we'll see more of Alita in Batches 2 and hopefully Batch 3 if there is one for Season 2. But anyway, Sissy Jones is great as Val here and she does continues to be good job as her throughout the remainder of this batch of Season 2. This next scene actually gives us a nice little conclusion as to what happened to all the goids Croft had Mandroid presumably build back at the end of Season 1. So, while Hashtag is making her way to Recyclable Center, Twitch calls her again where we cut back to Recyclable Center and see that she, Thrash, Nightshade, Jawbreaker, Robbie, and Moe are actually fighting all of the Goids left over at the Recyclable Center, seeming that apparently since on the way over to um, the Recyclable Center, 
the Goids were actually accidentally reactivated and now are trying to kill all the, the Maltos. But regardless, the, the Terrans are doing a good job fighting them all off. And when Hashtag gets there, they're able to dispatch all the Goids. Until, though, Hashtag realizes that what they've done isn't actually all the Goids, but only one of the three trailers full of Goids that they've brought to the Recyclable Center. So at this point, um, Jawbreaker and all the other Terrans play a little like game with see who's going to be able, gonna be the one to open the the next trailer full of goids and when jawbreaker loses he gets picked and i love how thrash just urges him on to like to go ahead and do it it's a really cute scene but as jawbreaker goes to open the next trailer full of goids they all start like reaching out like their hands like zombies trying to pull themselves out of the trailer but then jawbreaker tries to force it close hashtag's trying to see if she can actually hack the goids to shut them all down instantly without having to destroy them all again and thanks to val she's actually able to do just that so i'm not sure if this is because since Maybe the reason why Hashtag can't do them is because maybe there's still Mandroid's encryption on them. And they're because considering Val says that she's ha helping Hashtag break the encryption on them, I'm going to assume that that's what happened and that uh, Val essentially helped Hashtag break through Mandroid's encryption to shut down the rest of the Goids. But because of that, they're able to do without a hitch and everyone is impressed with Hashtag's new abilities with having Val and all that. But as she sets down the, the first batch of hard drives, we actually see Shockwave has been spying on her and the other Terrans the whole time, where what he has his, like, cortical psychic patch arm as, like, a little snake cam sneaking in to try and scan all the boxes of hard drive to see if the one that he's looking for is in there, which we learn later on in this episode, he's actually looking for Croft's hard drive. So, as um, Shockwave is scanning them all and sees that none of them are Croft's hard drive, he ends up reporting back to Starscream, who tell who he tells that Cross Hard Drive isn't there. So Starscream at this point is getting irritated with Shockwave and orders him to try again and continue searching the recyclable center while he sends Ravage to go ahead and search the Autobot base for it instead. So now the episode splits up into two stories. There's Hashtag Story where she takes the next batch of hard drives and takes them over to the Recyclable Center again while she's thinking in her head what she wants in her new ult mode. And then there's Ravage's story where she's infiltrating the Autobot base to try and find Croft's hard drive among the other hard drives still there. So while Hashtag Story is the one that actually happens next, I want to go ahead and focus on Ravage's story because I think that's honestly the weakest part of this episode in my opinion. Though it does have its good moments. So while, with, first off, it starts with Ravage infiltrating the Autobot base where she sneaks in, dodging all of the Terrans and Maltos as they, as she sneaks her way through. And we actually get confirmation in this episode that Ravage is in fact female in Earth Spark. Though anyway, Ravage continues to make her way through the, um, the Autobot base. And there are a few things I want to point out that I have a problem with in this episode. Just because I feel like this whole scene, it really feels like it's there for pad it for padding down time so it just kind of feels pointless in my opinion it's a cool action scene but it just feels like fluff it doesn't really add anything to the episode it has some cool scenes again but it just doesn't add anything so like when i'm just sneaking through we actually see some points where robbie and mo are like skateboarding throughout the ghost base since there's no ghost soldiers or goids in in the base anymore and then um there's this one part where all of the um the terrans get back and thrash and uh, I think Thrash and uh, Robbie are Thrash and Mo are teasing Jawbreaker. There's this one point. <coughs> There's this one point where Jawbreaker is walking, and for some reason the animation is just his walking cycle looks so so weird. And the same thing happens with Optimus later on this episode during a little run seg section. But and again, I know the reason for this is because 88 Pictures just isn't used to animating on this quality, and. It's just, but still, though, it's just very, very noticeable, and I hate to take points off for it, but just because I understand the problem with 88 pictures, but still, when it's that noticeable, it's something I kind of have a problem with. And another thing I have a problem with is Jawbreaker's in, like facial animations throughout this scene as well, because for some reason, whenever Jawbreaker is not in like right in front of the camera, his animations, his facial animations feel very stiff and like dull like it doesn't look like he's emoting at all i hate being this negative because i'm sure 88 pickers did the best they could but even like comparing to icon creative back in season one where very rarely this happened it did happen a few times i'm not gonna say icon creative was perfect they did mess up with the facial animations a few times but it feels like 88 pictures between this and the last episode with episode two in ruins it's happening a lot more and th th i'm just a little bit concerned about that but what I'm not concerned about, though, is actually the fight scenes. So, it's at this point where, um, 
Ravage is making her way through the Autobot base and manages to find a bunch of boxes in the Autobot base containing hard drive. So she turns into her cassette mode and starts scanning them all and trying to find if, Ra if Croft's hard drive is among them. Though it's at this point where she gets spotted by Nightshade, and so when they see her, they end up sounding the alarm, causing all the Terrans and, and Autobots inside to head over to where Ravage is. And it gets this really cool chase scene where all the Terrans and Autobots are chasing Ravage throughout the base. The, f the chase scene in this is really, really good, and we gotta thank one of the new storyboard artists for this episode, Josh McKenzie. He did a very, very good job animating part of this chase scene with Ravage running away from all the Autobots and Terrans. There's this one point where she's being chased by Robbie and Twitch, and then Mo and Thrash as well, and when they're, like, getting ready to corner, um, or Ravage, where, like, Mo's driving straight towards her, and then Robbie and Twitch are flying down from behind her, when they look like they're gonna, like, pincer maneuver her, Ravage actually leaps in between them and transforms mid-air into her cassette mode, so that she fits between the narrow g gap when Ro where Robbie and Mo are making, so they end up crashing into each other, but Ravage is able to escape, so... At, Ravage is able to get away just before the Autobot doors like shut down, but she didn't manage to find the hard drive So the mission was kind of a failure and that's kind of also why I feel like this scene as cool as it is Just really doesn't add much and is the weakest part of it in my point in terms of both story and animation Sadly and now we're gonna move on though to the best part of the episode Which in my opinion is hashtag story with her little journey of self-discovery with Val trying to figure out what her new alt mode will be so for this, we're going to actually rewind a bit back to when Ravage was still infiltrating the Autobot base, where we see Hashtag is with all the other Terrans getting ready to deliver the next batch of hard drives back to the Recyclable Center. As she does so, she stops to look at one of the last few Ghost fans that is still in the Autobot base when Twitch notices her staring at it and asks her what's up. So at this point, Hashtag explains to Twitch what's going on that she feels like, oh, since all they're getting rid of all the um, Ghost fans, Bumblebee thinks that I should get a new alt mode as well, and considering since I'll be the last ever ghost van, I don't think I'll fit in at all. And Twitch thinks that that's a really cool idea and that she'll be, that she'd be willing to help Hashtag find her all mode like she was there to help Hashtag find her first all mode back in season one. But Hashtag, while she's um, appreciative of Twitch's effort, she thinks this is something that she needs to do on her own. And I think that's a very, very empowering message that that's pretty much how Hashtag got her alt mode in season one. It was kind of an accident and kind of forced upon her by Twitch that Hashtag just really felt, okay, I want to get over this and just go back home and watch cartoons, essentially, back in Season 1. Let me just scan this random ghost van, not realizing it's a ghost van. But now, Hashtag, it really feels like this is what she really wanted out of an alt mode with this. And I think it's such an empowering, positive story where Hashtag is really taking control of her own identity that she didn't really get that freedom that she had in Season 1. Honestly, like, you switch a few things around... You could actually interpret Hashtag's journey of figuring out what she wants her almost to be almost as kind of a child realizing that they're potentially transgender or even non-binary. It really, really feels like it, like a journey of like gender identity and discovery. Hashtag's really thinking that like, okay, so I'm, I don't want to be a ghost fan. Maybe that's not, I am, I'm a ghost fan right now, but I don't feel like a ghost fan. That's not what I want to be anymore. Kind of like how many transgender and non-binary people might feel like, okay, well, whatever gender I'm assigned right now or that I've chosen for myself, maybe that's just not really what I'm feeling right now and I want to do that. And I really, really love that message. Maybe I'm digging into it a little too much, but to me, that's just how it feels. The hashtag's journey here really feels like a child realizing that they're transgender or non-binary, similarly to how Jawbreaker back in episode 12 of season 1 felt very much so like he was gay or bi. It was so, so cool to see. So anyway, though, as Hashtag is making her way to the Recyclable Center, she's thinking about all the things she wants um, her new alt mode to have, and Val helps her out with, like, putting together a little checklist. Like, um, she wants it to have really good storage, she wants it to have faster horsepower and better Wi-Fi reception, built-in weapons, and the like. However, as she's doing this, she's getting very distracted, driving on the road very nice, not-so-blatantly, not-so-subtle, um, don't-text-and-drive little um, illusion here. And as it starts to rain, Hashtag ends up accidentally driving off the road and nearly driving straight off a cliff in the process. And she ends up dropping a lot of the hard drives and manages to save herself. Though at in the process, though, as she's managed to save herself from the cliff, she ends up accidentally damaging her Ulma where the whole um, satellite dish of her Ulma gets ripped off. So she presumably loses all of her Wi-Fi capabilities, which again, I'm not sure if this is a way of 
basically nerf it, basically a uh, in-universe way of nerfing her Wi-Fi capabilities that, oh, she lost her in satellite dish, therefore she no longer has her Wi-Fi capabilities, considering she doesn't really use them in, in this season after this point. Though, it might just be because the opportunity never really arises for her to use her Wi-Fi capabilities in Season 2A. So maybe we'll see it in Season 2B. But regardless, I'm interested to see whether or not Hashtag has permanently lost her, a, her Wi-Fi abilities, if not due to this accident. But another thing I really like about this is actually when Hashtag gets back up, she's actually like, she ended up getting stuck in the mud because of how much it's been raining now to the point where they actually updated hashtags model in for the rest of this episode until she gets her new alt mode where she's got a bunch of mud splattered all over her alt mode i think that's really cool to see that we actually have changes to the characters bodies throughout due to different events that happened throughout this episode throughout the season first in episode one when hashtag got nearly killed by aftermath she had a giant dent in her chest for the remainder of the episode and now here after she got into a little accident she's got mud all over her like rims and limbs because of that and i think that's really really cool though because of this uh, because of this accident now hashtag's had a bunch of mud clogged in her like internal wirings and stuff, so she can't transform anymore so instead she decides to walk to the recyclable center on the rest of her way not realizing shockwave is still following her it's at this point though when shockwave scans her hard drives at this point when hashtag when shockwave realizes that this time hashtag is carrying cross hard drive or i know i don't think she actually is carrying hard drive she's carrying a bunch of hard drives but feels that since hashtags is carrying these hard drives he thinks following hashtag will bleed him to where cross hard drive is after this, Hashtag actually leaves the Recyclable Center and goes to Dot's Ranger Station so that she, Dot can help her clean her, her, her alt mode and basically make it so that she can transform again by getting all the mud out of her like armor seams and all that. And it's a really cute scene here, but honestly, it's the conversation Dot and Hashtag have here that really, really sell it on, on me. So, it's at this point where um, Dot asks Hashtag what happens considering that she literally just got into a pretty much a car accident. Funny you should say that actually because this is pretty much very reminiscent of an accident I had back when I was in high school in a car accident I almost actually died in. My senior year of high school I was driving home in my car from the rain in during like in some back roads and my car at the time had very very poor tracks in the rain. I was going like 50 miles per hour into a turn, like a very sharp turn, but my wheels locked up and I was about to go head first into a telephone pole. I managed to make the turn at the last second and spun out in the middle of the road. Thankfully, there were no other cars there, but I did end up uh, knocking someone's mailbox over accidentally and get a small dent on the side of the car. But thankfully, that was the worst damage to it. And so I kind of got a flashback to that when I saw hashtag accident here. But anyway, I'm getting off topic here. So with um, Hashtag explaining her accident to Dot and explaining how she's fo so focused on wanting to get her own new alt mode, Dot acts like, oh, why do you want a new alt mode? You're, you're perfect the way you are. But then Hashtag explains to Dot saying, well, Bumblebee's getting rid of all the ghost fans, and because of that, I don't feel like I really belong anymore as an alt mode. But then there's so much stuff I want in this alt mode, and I, I just want it to be perfect. And I love, love, love what Dot says here in response. And it's such an empowering message, especially, again, if we're going through the whole thing, this is an allegory for a child realizing they're non-binary or transgender. The thing Dot says here is absolutely great, and that is essentially she tells Hashtag, you can be anything you want to be, but you can't be everything. And I think that's such a strong, strong message. And Benny Latham performs this scene so, so well. I'm going to try to play a bit of this dialogue if I can here, if it doesn't get copyright claimed, because it's just so, so good what Dot says here to Hashtag. There are just so many different things I'd like to be. You can be anything you want, Hashtag, but you can't be everything. Decide what really matters to you and save the rest for your next alt mode. That last bit too of what Dot says where like, oh, you should focus instead on what you really, really need in alt mode because you can't be everything. And then later on, save what you can't fit in this alt mode for whatever alt mode you may decide after that. And I just love that, that it's such a very, very strong message for children that may think they're non-binary or transgender, where they may think that they might think that they're um, a they, if a, a cis man might think they're a woman instead, or a cis um, girl might think they're non-binary instead. But the fact is, you can't be everything. So just think about what you really, really want to be, and 
just because the end but also the fact that she's that dot tells hashtag pick and then leave what you have behind um what you have behind left behind say that for your next alt mode to me it almost seems like oh if you make a mistake in in figuring out what your identity is that's okay you can you can try again as many times as you need to to make sure you get the perfect identity that you want or in this case for hashtag her perfect alt mode so after this talk hashtag feels totally reinvigorated and feels like exactly what she wants her alt mode to do so she thanks dot for this and leaves after having her alt mode cleans just a bit to go ahead and deliver the last batch of hard drives to the recyclable center Unfortunately, while this is happening, Hashtag doesn't realize that she's actually being pursued by Shockwave. So once Hashtag gets to the, the, um, the uh, Recycle Center, ha Shockwave actually ambushes her there, planning to kill her and threaten her to give him the Croft's hard drive, which she now has with her at this point. Um, Hashtag is asking um, Shockwave why he wants the, sh the hard drive so badly, and Shockwave says it's the ultimate it's the has the key to what um starscream is planning with the with the complete ember stone so this one hashtag tries her best to run away from shockwave she drives down this big highway and later on into it wiki where <laughs> shockwave's just shooting up with wiki trying to kill hashtag and get the hard drive from her though hashtag is putting up a good fight at um trying to resist um trying to evade shockwave but her old alt mode just isn't fast enough to get away from shockwave so at this point val recommends to hashtag that now is the perfect time for her to find her new alt mode so she goes around scanning a bunch of stuff really quickly to try and find the best alt mode that can evade shockwave she goes to scan like a um like a little sedan then like a big pickup truck but none of them are really working until she finally sees her dream alt mode pass by her with a perfect um purple pickup truck with a perfect flatbed truck storage big horsepower and the like and hashtag is immediately in love with it so she follows that truck into a um, car wash while shockwave is stuck behind um in traffic so hashtag follows this car into the car wash and scans it while in the car wash so when the truck comes out shockwave thinks that it's going to be hashtag but it's actually the driver of the truck that hashtag scans so that truck goes one way while hashtag goes the other way now in her new alt mode so at this point, Shockwave is left behind a bit because he's struggling trying to figure out where Hashtag went, but eventually does um, um, catch up with her and tries to catch on to her. And I absolutely love this scene here of Hashtag battling Shockwave. It's so, so good. And storyboards are amazing in this scene and where Hashtag got her alt mode. For those who don't know, the storyboards in this scene were actually done by Eric Meister, not Josh McKenzie like he did um, the Robbie and Twitch and all the Terrans versus Ravage scene. This scene is really, really good because it's a good way of showing pretty much everything that Hashtag's new alt mode can do. So at first, it seems as though Shockwave is actually getting um, the edge in this fight where he's overpowering Shockwave, um, Hashtag quite a bit, beating her up a bit too. Though it's at this point when um, Hashtag realizes that Shockwave isn't going to stop until um, he gets the hard drive from her. She decides to just go ahead and fight Shockwave head on at this point, and I love it. So it starts off first where Shockwave in his alt mode jumps on top of Hashtag in her alt mode trying to like crush her. But then Val ends up activating like giant electro fields like or like tasers on the sides of Hashtag's alt mode to shock Shockwave off of her. It's so so cool. And then another part is when Hashtag is driving around trying to evade Shockwave. Val actually pulls up like two turrets out of Hashtag's front hood that Hashtag can shoot at Shockwave with. Very similar to like a stealth force. Transformer like back in the dark of the moon video game it reminds me a lot of that of the war for Cybertron Games that her hashtag is spinning around Shockwave shooting at him with her turrets. It's so so cool to see and then finally hashtag is able to outmaneuver Shockwave with her horsepower it ends up punching Shockwave right in the face to stun him long enough to steal the hard drive back from um, Shockwave and then she manages to get away while Shockwave is still unconscious from from the fight the episode then ends with two quick scenes involving Hashtag and Shockwave. With Hashtag scene, she ends up rolling back up to the Multi Homestead in her new alt mode, where everyone is in awe of it, up congratulating her on getting her new alt mode. Mo actually said something here that I really, really like, and she says, and I quote, she says something like, oh, I thought your old alt mode was really cool, but, but this one's cool too. And I don't think Mo, though, is saying this in a way like, oh, your new alt mode's like, all right, I guess. I think it's more so she's telling Hashtag, like, hey, I really liked your new alt mode, but if you're happy with this one, I'm happy for you too. I think that's such a good, empowering message. Because again, if we're comparing this all to basically a child coming out as trans, this, this to me feels like if Hashtag ends up being trans, 
and announcing that to her family, it would be more like, oh, I was fine with you this way, but if you're happy like this too, I'm happy for you as well. Like, I, all I want is for you to be happy. And I think that's such a strong message to show to people. And I really, really love this episode for that. After that, though, Hashtag explains to all the mul other Maltos that she was being chased by Shockwave because she was carrying Croft's hard drive and shows it to Alex and Dot, and where they both surmise that potentially the reason why Shockwave won is because it must have something very important for the Decepticons and Starscream. So Alex asks Hashtag if she can go ahead and scan the hard drive to see if there's any info on it, which Hashtag agrees to do. But this scene is never actually brought up throughout the remainder of this batch of episodes. To my knowledge, at least. I don't think it was brought up at all. So it kind of just feels like pointless, in my opinion. Though, after that, though, the episode then properly ends with Shockwave's scene, where he reports back to Starscream, saying that he was unable to get Cross hard drive. And just as Starscream's about to, like, mock Shockwave and, like, be angry at him for failing once again, Shockwave does the, does says that say that she he was able to actually scan Croft's hard drive and therefore retrieve everything off it, just not physically. So Sh Starstream commends Shockwave for that, and that's how the episode ends. And so that was Transformers Earthspark Season 2, Episode 3, Control Alt Delete. If I had to rate this episode, I'd give it a solid 9 out of 10. Definitely the best episode of this batch that I've reviewed so far. It's such a great episode involving hashtag gainer alt mode. It didn't feel rushed or forced at all. And I think it really paints a very positive message about gender identity and discovery for actual children. That if you're like hashtag and maybe maybe you're not looking for a new alt mode, but maybe you're someone who is non-binary or trans or and feels like they're not sh you're not sure what exactly you want. This episode is here to show you that it's okay to take your time and really think about what you want your identity to be. I absolutely love that. And then the fight between her and Shockwave was so good. Her um, hashtag and all the Terrence Valley and the Goids in the beginning was good too. The only thing I just didn't like this episode was Ravage's scene. But that's only literally like a two minute scene in this 22 minute episode. So I can excuse it for the most part. So that's going to be it for this review. I'll be back next week with episode 4, The Butterfly Effect. If you like this review, be sure to like, comment, and of course subscribe, and I will see you guys later.